Hi, welcome back. In this uh, lecture, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, BLE, which is um, a relatively new member of the Bluetooth family. Uh, this lecture is not meant to be comprehensive. Uh, I just want to give you an overview of this technology uh, so that you have an understanding on the kind of applications that you can build with it and uh, have a closer look at the Adafruit uh, Bluetooth LE module, uh, the uh, NRF8001 module. Now let's start with Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, it's a relatively new uh, member, as I said, in the Bluetooth family. Um, the reason that it exists is um, that a lot of applications these days are both uh, limited in size uh, and in the amount of energy that the batteries can store. They need to be mobile and um, they need to be uh, active for a relatively long time. So I'll give you an example this. This is um, a location device. Uh, it's called the Tile uh, Kickstarter project. So um, I got one of these uh, about a year ago and uh, I attached them to things like remote controls and uh, keys that I tend to lose frequently. And um, it's uh, a sealed package. So the, the idea is that uh, it's weatherproof as well. And um, if I lose my keys, for example, and I go to my mobile phone application uh, and try to page the device. Inside this device, there's a BLE chip and there is a little uh, tiny button uh, battery, but because the, the unit is completely sealed, there is no way to change the battery. So um, the, the people that made this had a, a goal of making it last for as long as possible. And uh, there was no other technology who really to do this other than um, Bluetooth uh, Low Energy. So this tile with the uh, integrated battery can last for over a year. I haven't reached the end of its lifespan yet, over a year. And then you throw it out and uh, you get a new one. A bit of a waste in my opinion, but that's how they made it. You can get um, tile-like devices uh, with a little compartment that you can open up and replace the battery. So you can do that once every two years, one or two years. And here is another example. This one here is the light blue bin. Uh, it's another Kickstarter project. Uh, it contains again, Bluetooth. It's got, uh, I think it's an Art Mega. Uh, well, Arduino compatible. I'm not sure if this is an Art Mega or something else, but it's an Arduino compatible module. Uh, it's powered by a button. Um, battery. That's how it came in the box. Um, it's been running for let's say about a year, I think, since I received it. Um, and uh, uh, basically, can do whatever an Arduino can do. So things like that are very popular these days. And there are other applications like heart rate monitors and um, uh, activity trackers and the like. So all these things are possible because they have two common characteristics. Um, they uh, require relatively low bit uh, data transfer between uh, themselves and a host uh, device, a phone or a computer usually. Um, they run on batteries for a very long time. And also the number three very important characteristic is that uh, the pairing process is uh, very quick and very easy. Uh, unlike the original Bluetooth, um, the, the full Bluetooth specification, which requires pins and uh, you know, a full, sometimes complicated pairing process, with uh, BLE, uh, the connection and the pairing uh, happens very, very quickly, um, maybe around 20 milliseconds. So let's have a closer look at BLE by looking at the BLE uh, uh, Wikipedia page. Um, a couple of things I'd like to mention. Um, there's examples of applications here. You can see that things such as applications in, in healthcare, uh, sports, um, internet connectivity and uh, you know, sensors and things like that are all very common in BLE. There's um, uh, keywords like profiles here, for example, that I'm going to talk a little bit later about those things. Uh, but this page gives you an idea of the things that you can do with uh, BLE. Um, another interesting thing 
Here's a comparison table that compares uh, the classic Bluetooth technology with uh, Bluetooth Smart or BLE. And you can see, for example, that range theoretically is about the same. Uh, that's, of course, in open space. Um, playing around with these two devices, especially with the tile, since I use it more often because I lose my things a lot, um, I found that in the house with uh, rooms and walls, um, the range is around maybe 15 to 20 meters maximum. And then I have to walk around with my phone trying to make a connection with the tile. As far as speed is concerned, um, again, the theoretical maximum is one megabit uh, per second. But in the applications that the Bluetooth uh, low energy is intended for, uh, you really rarely need to go up to that kind of bit rate. Um, the in terms of security, yeah, you've got your 128 uh, bit AES, so you can uh, implement encryption. Um, you can see here the latency, six milliseconds for BLE versus 100 milliseconds for the classic uh, Bluetooth. So this device is much, much faster. You see total time to send data, just three milliseconds. So this device is very nimble uh, when it comes to transmitting data. Uh, it's not meant to transmit uh, uh, a, a lot of data uh, constantly. So for example, uh, you wouldn't use BLE for an application that requires, um, say, uh, a wireless transmission of data from uh, one device to another, like images and, and video. For that kind of thing, you'd go for uh, the classic Bluetooth technology. But if you wanted to build a remote control uh, car, then the controller could be using BLE since uh, you only have short bursts of um, instructions from the controller to the car, like go left, go right, go faster, and so on. So for things like that, BLE is perfect. Finally, have a look at the um, consumption. So one watt, for the classic Bluetooth versus 0 0.0 watt, 1 to 0 0.5 watts uh, for uh, BLE. So this is very low energy at peak, about half in BLE versus the classic Bluetooth. So that's, uh, that's a few things to keep in mind and remember about BLE. Now let's move on to the standard uh, under which BLE operates. I think the most important thing to remember is that uh, the Bluetooth standard uh, for low energy devices, uh, one of its most important components are these two here, characteristics and services. Every application that you build needs to basically implement a service. For example, if you go in here, you have a, a long list of uh, so-called adopted services. And these adopted services include things such as um, building glucose meters and heart rate monitors and um, location navigation and so on. There's a lot of them here. And there's uh, a lot of other services that are not actually adopted for some reason. And um, an important one is uh, the UART, the serial uh, service. As per the name, uh, you would use the UART or serial service to create applications where you've got one device uh, with the Bluetooth module talking to a host and sending uh, characters uh, serially uh, receive and transmit, just like uh, you would do with USB, but wirelessly. So UART is not listed here, although it exists and you can use it. It's just for some reason not adopted. Now for every one of those services, you would need to attach characteristics. So you go into the characteristics lists. And again, you can see that there's a lot of them um, that are adopted by the standard and they all have their own assigned number so that you can distinguish between them inside your application by using these IDs. And you can see, for example, that there is one for age. If you have a look inside age, you see that this is an eight bit number. So if you, um, let's see, and let's have a look at another one. Let's uh, check out altitude. 
So if you attach the altitude characteristic to a service that your application is providing, then the data that it, you need to transfer and provide to it is a 16-bit integer, unsigned integer, and so on. There's a lot of them here. Now talking about the uh, UART again, um, which I remind you the service for that is not adopted, but you can still use it as unofficial. Then you would need to provide a couple of um, uh, characteristics, one for transmit and one for receive. Okay, so um, just one more thing while we're still here is that each one of those assigned numbers or IDs are uh, 128 bits in size for the characteristics, whereas for the services, they are uh, just 16 bits. Um, one more thing to remember about uh, Bluetooth LE is that just like uh, it's uh, uh, classic counterpart, the connections that you do are client and server. Uh, you can have one client um, BLE module connected to a single server or a single host. Uh, you can't have a client connected to multiple hosts. Typically, the role of the uh, central device, the server, let's call it, is played by a computer or a smartphone or something like that. And then the role of the uh, peripheral device, let's call it the client, is played by something like the Arduino or um, uh, a blue, a light blue bin or a tile or a keyboard or something like that again. That's a few basic things that are useful to know about BLE. Let's move on now and have a look at the other fruit uh, BLE module and see a few of the things that you can do with it and how to connect it.